In House of the Dragon's second season, we are introduced to a brand new character named Ulf the White. He's introduced briefly in the second episode, where we see him looking at dead rat catchers, but then more fully in the third episode, where he's entering a bar, everyone seems to know his name, he's loved, he's getting along with everybody, chatting everybody up. He sits down at a table and begins talking to what appear to be two of his friends and then one stranger, a dignitary from somewhere else, I believe it was Dorn. In this conversation, Ulf, seemingly to get drinks, claims claims that he is the bastard son of Prince Balon the Brave. For those who don't know, Balon the Brave was Jaehaerys Targaryen's heir. Jaehaerys Targaryen was the king before Viserys, and Balon was the father of both Viserys and Daemon Targaryen. This would make Ulf a very important person, even as a bastard, and today I'm going to go into what exactly that claim would entail for Ulf, and who I believe his true parents may be, as I don't necessarily think he's telling the truth about being Balon's bastard son. So Balon is the second of Viserys Targaryen's sons that lived to adulthood, and he was not initially the heir, but after his elder brother's death, he was uh, going to be next in line for the crown for quite a while. Unfortunately, he died, and that burden of heir uh, kind of passed to Viserys. But before that time, we need to talk a little bit about his relationship with his wife. He was married to his sister, which is gross, but Targaryens tend to do it. Uh, but her name was Alyssa. She was the original writer of Melis, the dragon we saw die in episode four. She was very, very close to Balon. The two of them were inseparable from the time they were very little. She's often described in Fire and Blood as following him around all the time, but she does precede him in death, despite being younger. She gives birth to a third child that is named Aegon. Aegon does not survive, and unfortunately, Alyssa dies from complications from the birth, as so many people do in this story. However, after that point, Balon remains seemingly uh, devoted to her, his wife despite her passing. We know that one of his sisters, Viserra, makes a pass at him a few years later, and he outright denies her, seemingly guided entirely and consumed by grief for his wife, Alyssa. It's that grief and that kind of lack of moving on that has made people raise an eyebrow to Ulf's story, in addition to him being a pretty clear uh, bit of a BSer. With that said, he definitely has the look of a Targaryen, and we have heard of some Targaryens kind of going outside the bounds of their relationships in order to just kind of do what they want as to not get demonetized. Uh, so it's worth considering, given the fact that he does have this look, and we do know that uh, Targaryens are pretty important, who might his true parent be? There are a number of candidates that I think could make sense, but one of them I really haven't seen discussed by anyone else, and that is my main theory to discuss today. I think that the mother of Ulf the White is none other than Gael Targaryen, the youngest child of Jaehaerys I. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps grow the channel. And yeah, let me know what you think of this theory. I was very happy when I thought of it, and I'm excited to share it with you. Gale was born in the year 80 AC, the youngest child of good queen Alysanne and Jaehaerys I Targaryen, two of the most celebrated rulers in all of the history of Westeros. She was known as the Winter Child, as she was uh, viewed as being born in the winter of Alysanne's childbearing years, and she was also born during an actual winter. We don't have a ton on her from her time growing up. She was the youngest of these kids, and for most of Fire and Blood, tends to just kind of blend into the background. But we do catch back up with her in 90 9 AC. At that point, she is 19 years old, and she disappears from court without a trace. It's unclear exactly what's happened to her at that point, but overall, nobody in the time period knows exactly what's happened. It only comes up later in the historical record, and we have the kind of ability to have knowledge of it through the maesters that have actually compiled this in-universe history book, Fire and Blood. The story behind Gail's death was that she died of a disease called summer fever that at the time was going through the capital. This was not true. Gail had disappeared from court because she was pregnant. She had been impregnated by a traveling singer who she had seemingly fallen for, not unlike the tale of Bale the Bard, and she gave birth to a stillborn son, and due to her grief from uh, just losing this child, she did a uh, spoilers for a book I read in high school English class, The Awakening. She walked in to the sea and never return. She was uh, just kind of consumed by this grief and chose not to continue on with life. This was a great tragedy, and this is one of the last tragedies suffered by Jaehaerys and Alysanne, as Alysanne, in fact, dies the next year, which is largely associated with this grief. But I think that there is some element of it that could be different. I think that the fact that the story was obscured for so long in the historical record could speak to some sort of inaccuracy therein, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that here. 
Jaehaerys Targaryen very famously did not like it when his daughters uh, had relations outside of wedlock. He famously had a daughter named Sarah who ended up kind of just getting around a little bit, and he and her got into a lot of fights that essentially resulted in Sarah being banished from court forever and being sent to Essos, where she ended up working in a brothel. This was a massive point of pain between Jaehaerys and Alysanne in their later years, as they constantly argued about Sarah and whether or not they should reach out and summon her back to court after she'd been banished by Viserys when she was fairly young. This is the reason that they quarrel so often. In fact, they have two quarrels, they're called, over the course of their relationships, and one of them is caused by this dispute over Sarah and the supposed dishonor she brought to their house based on having intimate relations outside of marriage. We don't hear of any of the other Targaryen children of Jaehaerys I having relationships outside of marriage, except for Gael Targaryen. I think it's pretty interesting, given the fact that we really know a lot about most of the other siblings, that Gael and Sarah are the only ones that have this commonality. However, Gael's ends quite a bit worse. Sarah does not have any bastard children while she is in Westeros. Gael does. It's unclear, though, what exactly could have happened. My thought is that maybe there was some interference by one or both of Gael's parents. Let me explain. Both Alysanne and Jaehaerys knew that Jaehaerys did not want a bastard child to be acknowledged from House Targaryen. That was a lot of his fear with Sarah. He just did not want that. He viewed that as a great dishonor upon the house. So my thought is that maybe the supposedly stillborn bastard son was not stillborn after all. I could see a case for either Alysanne or Jaehaerys taking this child away and trying to hide them away from Gale to be raised somewhere else, not as a Targaryen. I think that both Alysanne and Jaehaerys have very strong motivations for doing this. I think Alysanne is the slightly better candidate for having done this, especially given how hard the tragedy hits her afterwards. I think Alysanne would have seen what had been done to Sarah, how she was fully banished for just this one simple misgiving that Jaehaerys just detested, and she thought that if she was able to cover it up completely for Gale, if she was able to make it seem as though no bastard child had ever been born, given the child away to just some family in King's Landing, rather than raising it or or just having the shame just relate to Jaehaerys and just have her cast uh, Gale aside, I think it might be better in Alysanne's eyes to hide the bastard and hopefully allow her daughter to raise, be raised in a way that is not dishonored, because she was still only 19 at the time. Jaehaerys might have similar motivations, but just focused on the house and not necessarily himself. He might have been ashamed by having a Targaryen bastard and just given the child away and told Gale that it was stillborn. Neither Alysanne nor Jaehaerys likely would have anticipated what that would do to Gale, and that could very much make sense why this was kind of the last nail in the coffin for the relationship and for Alysanne will to live, seemingly. But that would result in Ulf being raised in Flea Bottom by some other family who really doesn't know much about his parentage, but maybe they would know something. Maybe they have somewhat of an inkling as to his true nature, and maybe they would have raised him on that story. With that said, it would make a lot of sense for Ulf to, if he was going to make up that he was the son of any Targaryen, it being Balon the Brave is a pretty great call. Both matches his age pretty well, and he is the source of the current line of kings, so in terms of trying to make himself seem important and get people to buy drinks for him, that does very much seem to be the best possible option. My biggest issue with this idea is Ulf's age. He seems a little older than would be possible for being born in 99 AC or around there, so that's really the one issue, but they have messed around with ages a fair bit in House of the Dragon. I could see them having made Gale a little older, but either way, I'm not sure if we'll know exactly who Ulf's uh, parents are at any point in the series. I just thought it'd be fun to speculate and figure out who this could be. I do think there are really only two other candidates outside of Balon and Gale who it could have been. Aemon is another one. Aemon is not the guy the Night's Watch in the main series. That's Maester Aemon and a different guy many, many years later. Aemon was Rhaenys's father, and he did live in King's Landing for quite a while. He died pretty young. His wife did outlive him, but we do hear from Viserys and Daemon that some Targaryens do frequent the Street of Silk, so there's a non-zero chance it could be him instead of his younger brother Balin, but I don't see why uh, the line of of uh, Balin would be claimed of the line of Aemon, other than just trying to claim the current line of kingship. Sarah is also worth talking about. As we said, she is someone who is banished from court 
who is uh, who is because of these scandals that have kind of plagued her. And we do know from the book that four of her bastards show up at what is called the Great Council of 101. The first scene of the show, they make cases why they should be the king of Westeros because they are better in line than these people who are Drewborn, but all of them are rejected pretty quickly. My only thought was that maybe he could be one of those four bastards who try to make a claim thanks to their parentage of Sarah. But overall, I don't, I don't think that's more likely than Balon. I'd say in terms of likelihood of these theories, I'd say in my eyes, it's Gale, Balon, Sarah, Aemon in terms of likelihood from most to least. Thank you for watching. As I said earlier, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow, and I'm very excited to continue making videos for the rest of the season of House of the Dragon, and just making videos about A Song of Ice and Fire generally. It's very fun, I have a lot more to say, and I hope you will join me for all of the future videos. Thank you again for watching. Goodbye, everyone.